Hi guys! So I feel like it's been so long since I sat here and like doodled for you in my little sketch a day journal book. If you guys don't know, I used to do sketch a day journals, not used to. It feels like used to, like I threw it away. It was literally a month ago or more since I've done one. It's insane. I've been sick and like traveling and I'm still getting over it and I cough a lot. So I'm sorry if my voice is a little bit raspy still. It's getting along there. I need more sleep. But I thought today we would draw something really odd and kind of like old. This is about a movie that was really popular when it came out in 2009. And it was a children's book that was made into a movie called Where the Wild Things Are. And I'm going to sit here, rant and ramble and talk about it because I was on a lot of cold medication when I saw this movie. I was sick and I'll just tell you everything that happened. It was a lot different than I thought it was gonna be. So let's get on with the drawing. So like I said, Where the Wild Things Are was originally a children's book and I remember seeing it but not reading it. Like it's one of those books where I passed by it and I didn't really read the whole thing. I remember flipping through the pages and just looking at the pictures of the cool monsters on it because the cover I remember had like these creatures of monsters and that's all I really knew about it. I remember, you remember book fairs back in the day? I don't know if you are around that age but we used to have book fairs in elementary school. Maybe they still do this but on the holidays we used to have this Santa's gift shop where you could purchase like these little trinkets that are literally like from the dollar store but you spent a lot more money than a dollar for it and you got them for your family. Long story short, this book was always at the Christmas gift shop and at the little bookstore thing we had in the library. What was it? Scholastics Book Fair. That's what it was. And I remember I would save all my money for the Goosebumps series instead of this book which I should have checked it out and probably read it. But I watched the movie and said, doesn't everybody do that these days and this movie was so much different than I thought it was gonna be and that's why I wanted to draw it because this book isn't just about a boy in his imagination I honestly thought it was gonna be him traveling through Narnia and it was a little bit like that like he got really mad at his mother because she was dating this guy who was a teacher and he got really frustrated and was fighting with her and ran away from home and he ran across into this like creek thing with a boat and I don't want to give away too much but he went to this other land that was filled with monsters and let me tell you these monsters oh my gosh they taught me so much I don't know if it was the cold medicine and I was just saying to myself I am not going to shed a tear or cry over these large hairy muppets no it's not going to happen but these monsters with this child's imagination and everything just taught you so many lessons. This movie was not just about a child running away and fighting. This movie was about family and friendship and how we do not look at other people's perspectives in lives and how we affect them. For instance, you never know what your parents are going through. Sometimes we forget that our parents are human as well. Not honestly, I mean, not like they're aliens. I mean that they started out kind kind of just like us. I hate to say it. I know sometimes we don't want to think that our parents were like us and confused and lost just like we were at some point, but they were. And our anger can really inflict upon them because we are comfortable with our parents because they are going to be those people who are usually there throughout your whole entire life. They're the person who you could always fall back on. That's what family truly honestly is. And it goes with best friends, like the bestest of friends. Your anger could also inflict on them if you're really close and comfortable around them. Maybe they'll know when you're super hurt and angry and you may have like these instincts where you want to explode and you're trying to figure things out but honestly you may be also hurting other people and not realize it if you're trying to fight back not only mentally but verbally and maybe even physically and it's not anything to do with them sometimes sometimes it's just something in your mind that you're struggling with and a lot of us get confused about life and all the things and changes that happen changes can always be good or bad and a lot of people they do not like the word change like you've changed People don't like it when you say that to them, I've learned in life. But it can mean a good thing. It depends on your tone a voice and how well people know you and how I just want this movie to be really caught in the eye of like its morals. Or maybe I just look way too into things. Honestly, you could probably get like really deep thoughts and theories about some Pixar and Disney movies. 
But I feel like this movie would have done a lot better in the 90s because it reminds me so much of The Labyrinth, or should I say 80s? 80s to 90s, they had movies like that with like Dark Crystal, where it was these live Muppet things. I'm not sure if these were like people in suits or robots or computer generated something that I can't do that was generated from someone's mind and geniuses at hand. But again, on that moral of where the wild things are, this movie was like a weird turn in Wonderland. That's why I think it was built for the 90s and would have done a lot better then. Like sometimes you're like, am I on some sort of drug on how much cold medication I was on trying to get well? But literally, if you really look into this movie, not only as a child's book that was turned into something that you're watching on film, it kind of like shows you that the people who are strongest in your life, who stand by you through thick and thin, who stand by you when you're really upset or happy through good and bad times, they are the ones that are worth your time and who could really make you truly happy in life just having people who are so positive around you because one of these people, not people, monsters in the movie of Where the Wild things are. He, I am not kidding you, ripped his friend's arm off. I know it's imagination world weird thing with monsters and Muppet looking hairy things, but he ripped his friend's arm off and that friend was still a loyal friend like, oh, don't worry. I could just sew that back on or get a new one or grow one maybe. Who knows? It just makes you realize that there are some people out there, no matter how much you're hurting, they will want to help you. I just always like simple child movies that really have a deep, more hidden meaning in it so that maybe children are learning stuff that they may not even be knowing that they're learning things. But I really like how this turned out. Honestly, I love drawing little fantasy creatures and stuff. Sometimes when we grow up, we lose our art side and imagination and little fantasy worldly things intrigue me because I think it brings more ideas of imagination into everyday life, even if you are a child, an adult, an elder. Sometimes you can make your life have a little magical spot in it just by drawing and listening to good music because I was listening to Michael Buble's Christmas song, hence the red lips and crazy hair. I just rolled out of bed kind of and threw some lipstick on my face and drew this. But that's my little creature drawing and rant on where the wild things are. So I hope you guys like my little sketch day video of where the wild things are creatures and the little boy. Thank you guys so much for letting me do these videos and having so much fun. For listening to my rants and rambles and I love you guys so much. But before I forget, shout out to Gia who sent me, oh my gosh, me and her as Tim Burton like character. She drew us in like a Tim Burton esque style with like a little orange cloud and the little mustache faces. It's so adorable and cute. And that is not all. Gia drew me a portrait and it's one of the most beautiful things. Look at that. <gasps> so pretty, I swear. I look prettier on this than I ever have in my real natural state in life ever. In my natural habitat, no, I do not look like this, but you are an amazing drawer and an artist and she said she spent so much time on this and it was well worth it. Look at that, I need to frame this. I'm gonna put it in a scrapbook or frame it. So thank you to Gia for those. And for anyone who sends me any letters or drawings, if you send me a letter or anything, you can write to me to this address. And if you want me to write you back, you just have to send in an empty envelope with a prepaid stamp on it so I could address it back to you and like write you like pen pals. And I love you guys so much. I will definitely be seeing you soon. Bye. You can never look exactly like someone else. This is just for fun. And then I'm just getting a light brown eyebrow pencil and then coloring in my eyebrows. You don't want to look like you just shaved your eyebrows completely off and drew some new ones on. And you don't want to look like an angry Chola either. Somewhere in the middle where Angelina Jolie stands, it's going to be a little bit arched, not too thin.